Hi everyone, this is Lutz and today I'm going to show you how you can use your Raspberry Pi Pico with the LCD and how you can program it and even use custom characters that you can make signs on your LCD. If you want to know how this works, let's start right now. Before we start programming our Raspberry and make our software code for the LCD connection, we have to look at first how to connect it to our Raspberry Pi. And uh, what we have to do is that we have to connect our LCD to a 5 volt system and to ground. And then we need to find two other pins for our I2C connection if you have an LCD with I2C. If you don't have one, I would recommend you to buy a translator because that's quite more easy. And yeah, what we have to find is a pin which is able to drive I2C commands and these are the one in blue. So more or less every pin is able to drive I2C if they are not power pins or something very yeah, seldom here where it's not able. But most of the pins are able to do it. And now the question is how do we connect it to there? So as I mentioned before, we are powering the LCD with a 5 volt and this is coming back over the bus signals. So the I2C bus which is coming from the LCD display is using 5 volt logic and our Raspberry Pi has a 3 volt logic and I just want to quickly show you what this means to the circuit. So um, if you have here your Raspberry Pi Pico inside and you have here your your signal like let's say that's SDA for data and you have a high pegel or a high level for um, 5 volt and then you have inside inside of the IC so not on the board in the IC you have your logic module for I square C and then you have some other things inside of your IC so here on the top, just that it's easier, is a power rail, so 3.3 volt. And this is supplying those circuit. And also on the bottom side, there's a supply, so for ground connection. So yeah, we can do it like this. So and yeah, now you have this 5 volt here and you have a 3.3 power supply for the all of the things which are inside of your microcontroller and you have th something else what is not so obviously so we have some kind of diodes which are connecting our pins from the pin to the 3.3 or to ground and the reason why we have them is that we have to be safe against ESD because this all of these modules would die if you go with the ESD pulse to it. So this is something around two two kilovolt or yeah, depending on the pulse, it could be even higher. So that's the reason why we have some kind of absorber diodes inside of this IC. And what is happening now is if we have here a five volt supply, then we go over that pin or we go inside of our housing of our IC housing and then we will have a current flowing through the th in the direction of the 3.3 volt. So what is happening now this is a nonlinear device as a diode is and this will force like infinity current through this diode. So the diode would die if you connect it directly with 5 volt. So normally this S di or every i square c signal is a high ohmical signal so there's some kind of resistor inside but um, what i normally do is because i don't have so many uh, level shifters at home so i'm just putting a resistor here just something like 2.2k is what i normally use so if we have now 5 volt here and we have here those diodes, so we will have here 4 volt. And then we will have a voltage drop of around 1 volt over the resistor. And if the resistor is 2.2K, then it's just 400 microamps. And 
that's what is normally okay for those kind of diodes. So normally they are able to drive at room temperature one milliamp and with 400 microamps you're below this. So normally this is working and the I2C bus is not that fast that you would run into issues by putting a resistor inside. And uh, those diodes are also the reason why you are not allowed to drive a negative voltage here. So that would happen the same if you go with a voltage which is over minus or below minus 0.7 volt. You would see here the same reason. So just for your knowledge, that's the reason why you are not allowed to block negative voltages to the pins. It would kill the same diode. And yeah, if the, si the diode is dead, that could happen different things. So one would be that you have a direct short circuit to 3.3 volt and that 3.3 volt would kill you all the rest of your microcontroller. Or it could be open and if it's open, the next ESD pulse would kill your I2C or your other modules which are in parallel to that. So that's a reason why you have to take care about that issue. So that's the solution I'm using. But there are many other solutions like level shifters, which is recommended in this um, software library where I'm basing on the software which I use. So they are using a level shifter, which is also fully okay. And it's the more serious solution than that would I do. So I don't give you a guarantee that it's working on your Raspberry and maybe you are killing your Raspberry by doing it with a resistor. But if you don't have a level shifter at home, you can do it with the resistor and try it. And if it's dead, I'm sorry for you, but I never heard that it's happening. So yeah, that's the way how you have to connect your Raspberry Pi to your display. And um, yeah, then we will proceed with software programming. After we have connected our LCD to the Raspberry Pi, we have to download the software we need to program it. And for this, we go to the Raspberry Pi repository I made for you. I'll give you the link down in the description. And here we click on code and download zip. And then we go to our download folder and extract everything. And then we take those Python files and copy them to a location on your C drive. You can also put it everywhere else, but it's for me it's easier to put it directly on C drive. And then we open our Tony and we press on view and then on files. And here you can oops, here you can choose your location. And in my case uh, I'm directly where I want to be. And then you mark those files and say upload to. And then it's copying everything to the Raspberry Pi Pico. Now we can open the main scan file. And this is the one you need if you want to scan your uh, connected I2C devices. Um, if you need to figure out your I2C address, you can run this code. And previously, you have to set the pins you have connected your LCD, your LCD display to and the I2C channel. And if you're not sure which one it is, uh, you see it here in the pinout. So the pins, um, what I'm using is 40 and 50. And here we have the I2C bus one and some others have one or two. So it's up to you what you're using. So you have to enter that and then you just run the code and then you get the number for or the address of the I2C. And yeah, that's everything you need to do for the scan part. And as last thing, we came to the real fun part. We program our LCD. And for this, I made an example for you um, because I added something in the libraries and I think it's quite easier to use than the original things they give with the library. So. I stick to my example because I like it more. So the first thing we're going to do is that we import from the library everything we need and then we give it the I2C address and the size of the display. So in my case I have four lines and 20 characters. If you have a two line and a 16 character display you can just change it here. 
and then we give it um, again the IP like in the script before and the channel and then we create a LCD and this stuff here is just for showing some of the comments you can use them but probably I yeah don't use comments like this because I just want to print something out and I don't want to turn on any lights or not but I just want to show you what's happening if we run this then you get some ideas what is happening with the comments so yeah as I said I don't use that normally so let's go to the code what we are using if you want to use in Tony those comment and uncomment stuff it's working with control and four for uncomment and three for comment so just as a hint um, yeah what we are doing here maybe I comment that one out again is that we just write a line and this is yeah what I added to the code because it's quite easier to use when you can directly access the lines you are using and I just show it to you what's happening so it's writing to the LCD the code out and yeah here you can change the line into the direction what you want I think that's quite helpful and yeah also we have here um, something what is called customized character or yeah some people call it unified character or whatever um, here you can make your own characters I just want to show you how it looking like and um, yeah I'm just using something like a mark where you can make a check mark or you can use um, some kind of arrow where you can make whatever you like and I just want to give you an idea how you can do it so here's another cool website where you can just create your own signs and yeah let's say we want to do some kind of pattern like this oh, come on just do it make something really beautiful then we just have here the addresses which are activated and important is that you mark those hex codes and then we copy that and go to our program code and in my case I'm just want to set it at the first character um, so what we are doing here is that we define our characters and on the LCD there's a, a RAM buffer where it's written in so what we are doing here is that we define those custom characters and we give it the number where it's saved so what we do here I just take that one because that's called as the first in the software code and then we just uh, yeah add those things here and make it a bit more beautiful and then we run it and we will see on our display it's working so yeah that's more or less everything you need to know if you want to run an LCD on your Raspberry Pi Pico if you like the video I would like to see that you give me a thumb up and yeah I hope to see you next time I hope you learned something and goodbye